Here's a piece that has no upgrades. You see that it can just use these. Upgrade this piece. It's going to increase affixes by 5%. And this is where things start to get pretty good. And actually, the pit is very rewarding, in my opinion, in terms of gameplay. So let's talk about dopamine for a second here because we're talking about rewards as well. If you take a look at this weapon that I have, this weapon gives at the moment 168% increased damage to close enemies. Now, if we upgrade that by 5% per tier, let's just make some easy math and say that's about 7.5% additional damage to close enemies every upgrade. A lot of druid builds will run Thunderstruck. Now, this is of course, again, just an example. Your build may use a totally different system. However, at Thunderstruck, is going to give you 20% of your damage versus close and damage versus distance bonuses. So if I'm getting 7.5% per upgrade that I'm getting from running, say, the pit and using this master working, I'm essentially getting 1.5 multiplicative damage increase every time I upgrade that one piece of gear. And that's pretty strong. In fact, it's somewhat noticeable on the character. Now, on this particular build, it is noticeable and it feels good to run the pit, get an upgrade on, say, one of those pieces or maybe even two pieces at a time keep going back in and farming. It's been very rewarding in that regard. Welcome back everyone. Today we're gonna to be talking about the pit and you'll access the pit by using the portal activator, which can be found in Saragar. And Saragar is of course up in Skosman. Easy to do, you'll have this waypoint by default. You'll start accumulating what's called rune shards. And you'll see that there's a collection of your rune shards here. You should have these just from going through the game, doing the normal tasks that you would be doing in any other season. As for selecting a tier in the pit, you'll unlock later tiers as you complete them and essentially progress through it. Now, this is really similar to the greater rifts, which you might have found in Diablo 3, or even challenge rifts, which you might have found in Diablo Immortal. The type of material that will drop from each of their tiers or rifts will actually be shown here, and you'll get this material all the way from tier 1 until the next material is unlocked, which happens to be tier 31. So 1 through 30 will drop one type of material. After reaching tier 31, you'll start unlocking another material. Now, this is important because when you start clearing, say tier 31, you'll no longer get the original material that you were getting previously. This will actually have an effect on you. And I think it's a negative one to tell you the truth because when you go into your master working and you begin upgrading all these pieces, well, you're looking for that first material and you're gonna be using these in order to upgrade them. And I can show you an example here. After several upgrades being four, you'll now unlock an additional 25% to one of the affixes on your item. Now, at this point, you'll need the next material. So if you start clearing higher tiers, well, if you haven't upgraded all your gear, you still need to farm a tier that you might already be farming very easily. It just means you're kind of clearing content. It's a little bit outdated for you. It's likely very difficult to see, even if I zoom in on the screen for you. But if you look at your gear, you'll notice that there's some icons at the bottom. This has to do with your master working. The first set of upgrades that you get will have circles. There'll also be a Roman numeral one just above that. The next set of upgrades will start having triangles with a Roman numeral number two. Now there's all kinds of items around some of the gear or the icons in this game now. And a lot of this just at first glance kind of makes you feel like it's a mobile game. The reality of this is that if you actually acquire an upgrade of a piece of gear while you're going through the pit and the items dropping from there are item level 925, so it's likely that eventually you will find one. Well, if you're clearing say tier 50 pretty easily, you get a new piece of gear, all of a sudden you need to go back to tier 30 and start farming that again until you get to the next level of upgrades. Now this seems a little bit overkill as once you've progressed onwards from these tiers, there's really no reason that you need to go back. Again, if you found an upgrade and were swapping a piece of gear, you could use the original piece that you had on that might've already had a few upgrades before equipping the new one, meaning that you can actually upgrade the new piece you're looking to use prior to even equipping it the first time. So it's not like your stats are ever gonna get worse. So it would be nice to see the system eventually maybe get a slight tweak to that, meaning that the higher tiers are actually also dropping the lower tier materials and just kind of streamline the process. We're simplifying everything in terms of loot or being loot reborn. Kind of seems backwards to go and farm content that you're much stronger than. For master working, you're gonna need a fully tempered legendary. So just make sure that you have one of those, otherwise you won't be able to do it, or you need an ancestral unique item. In fact, you'll see a couple of these are grayed out. I can't use Master Worker on these because they're not actually ancestral. I'm just using those uniques for the actual bonuses they offer. The tempering process is pretty streamlined as well. It might seem a little confusing at first, but you'll just select a piece of gear to put in there. You'll have various recipe categories that you can select from, and then you'll roll from one of these affixes in here. For example, if you select the Worldly Endurance, you'll be rolling between maximum life, total armor, and dodge chance, and you can re-roll these a number of times 
Just a quick tidbit there in terms of tempering, just for anybody who's unaware or hasn't reached a point where they're starting to do that. So let's go ahead and take a look at tier 30 of this pit or rift as you may want to call it. And this is going to drop the very first tier of materials in order to upgrade the gear because I still have some pieces that I haven't upgraded at all. At this point, I need to get them all to the second material before going further with them. You're going to zone into a random map and you may be familiar with some of them and have a good idea of where you're headed. You're just going to kill enemies. In this case, you're not going to have to pick up any loot. You don't need to pick up any objects and all you're going to do is just kill and you're taking a look at a timer and then eventually you're going to fight a boss exactly like a greater rift or challenge rift as mentioned before but those might be new to you as well you'll see this bar is starting to grow this is essentially your progress bar the more monsters or enemies that you kill the more progress you'll get and you want to make sure that you beat that timer you can die inside of here and it's okay you'll actually just extend the timer you'll spawn relatively close if you happen to be on the final boss You'll extend the timer, spawn a little bit further away, and the boss will have all its health regenerated. So you're gonna have to start from scratch in terms of killing the boss. Overall, pretty straightforward stuff. You get the hang of this really quickly. Speed is of the essence in here. You're gonna want a somewhat mobile build as you get towards the higher tiers. And you also need a boss killer build, okay? You wanna make sure that you're not spending all 15 minutes trying to kill the boss. So there'll be different ways you can go with this. A really good AOE build that has a slower, clear speed on the bosses would be okay. Or a really high single target build that kills bosses very quickly is also going to be strong here as well. So you do have some options, but ultimately there may be a little bit more kind of nitpicking in terms of which build will function here towards the higher tiers. But we'll see more about that in the coming days. I suspect that the majority of the player base will likely begin doing the pit or progressing through it come this weekend. This is going to be probably be where the bulk of players, we've kind of got the people out in front who have already been here for several days at this point. And then you're going to kind of get the majority of players who have a little bit less time to spend playing the games and so forth that are going to reach this. So nothing to be afraid of. Nothing is really going to change as we finish this out. A little bit over halfway and we're just still killing. One thing that has really been amazing in here is that you will go through portals to get access to more mobs and eventually to the boss as well. There's no cast time on those portals. Whereas we've seen in some dungeons, say while you're leveling or even running Nightmare Dungeons, you click on the portal and there's a cast time. You can actually die in some of these effects if there's ground effects and whatnot. These are pretty quick. You just click on them and you'll go right through. That's really a nice change because as mentioned, you're not picking up loot, you're just speeding through. It's nice to not have that cast time or even get interrupted. In fact, I wish all the portals and even interactions in this game kind of function that way. So let's we'll see if we kind of see some later tweaks based on some of the feedback we get from here or even the pit itself. So I should be spawning the portal right here and here you can see I just instantly go through it. There's none of that cast bar. There's gonna be a few more effects that you may not be used to. Staying in bear form on purpose here for a few seconds. It's just gonna give my character a buff unrelated to actually any mechanics of the pit. And here I'm gonna go ahead and try to get some damage out on the boss. And at this point, you'll see the boss is somewhat tanky considering how quickly I flew through the rest of it or the enemies leading up to this point and then you get some drops so you're going to get all your items at once towards the end and inside of this mastery chest is where you're going to get some of those materials you also get some obols that you can gamble off as well and see if you get any upgrades from there so pretty straightforward stuff you will now take these materials as i showed you in the beginning you'll exit here and go to the blacksmith if you're clearing your very first pit then you will actually have to teleport somewhere else in order to turn in the quest but after that you can just go to the blacksmith right here in Saragar. at this point you can begin upgrading your gear and essentially you just grind this over and over now i also want to mention that you can reset the masterwork ranks as we showed in the very beginning as you upgrade a piece of gear you'll start getting these blue lines on your affixes that's a affix that's been increased every four ranks you're going to get a bonus to one of those affixes if you're unhappy with which affix got boosted well you can reset it and try again so there's some rng to this as well my first time through, I'm just trying to max all these items possible. And obviously I'm looking for some ancestral uniques for the two slots that I don't have them, but it's fairly on in the season and this character is still progressing. In terms of grind, you'll just go back into the pit. So in this gameplay session, for example, I'll just be going right back in here, whether I want to continue doing lower tiers or progress the tiers up in order to rank up some of the items that have already had a few ranks. It's the same thing, right? I'm going to be going in, farming it over and over till I push all these items higher and then can move up into higher tiers. As we close out, I'm going to open a later one and just farm some of the later materials, which you'll see 
However, getting in and as it scales up, it actually scales up pretty quick. This character can still continue to push. This is just where I've left off at this point. But I do want to briefly show you just the increases in health, and that will be somewhat noticeable in this character once we get inside. The timer here is still not going to be an issue for this particular build. This is really more an issue of surviving as this skills up, but its damage on this build, which is a tornado build, has plenty of damage output. So we'll go ahead and you'll see that already it's probably noticeable that not everything is dying or falling over on one hit. But we're still going to get way ahead of the timer as you can see, and then when we get to the final boss, it's just a matter of avoiding the mechanics as you would normally do in something like a tier 100 nightmare dungeon. overall your character is going to be grinding any build defining uniques you'll be grinding glyph experience in order to level up those glyphs and then you're going to be grinding in the pit in order to upgrade your master working rank so it's a lot of repetitive running over and over and this isn't really a new system if you've played some of the previous diablo titles as basically looking at crater rifts here yeah it's somewhat low there but it did not go down but like I said, you'll notice the damage definitely ramps up. The enemy health is noticeably higher. And you'll need to progress your character through all those tiers of the master working on various pieces of gear, most likely. Now, there are obviously some builds or classes that are stronger in general and will have more of an easier time progressing through here without upgrading everything. Or just to increase and improve all the gear. So. I expect that this will be more popular for people farming through here in order to just kind of maximize everything until they get bored and perhaps put the season down or start a new character. Just about halfway here and hopefully we get a boss on this level without having to go to another one. Ultimately doesn't make that much of a difference. If couple of seconds just getting to the portal and then finding enemies once you zone into the new one but in general the mob density on all the levels seems to be pretty good i haven't really had any complaints zoning into a level and trying to get out of it immediately per se like you might have in different diablo games where you may zone in and immediately zone out because you don't like that level or the minions that have within it i have not had to do that within the pit so far that may change as the tiers get higher as there's always going to be a mob type that's best or worst, right? And even if you nerf or buff something, it's just going to change which mob is best or worst. So we'll see how that goes and just see how things scale in general. Trying to stay alive here from all these enemies. And we're just about to get to the next floor. And you'll notice that the boss is definitely going to be noticeably different, specifically with the amount of health that it has. I'll go ahead and enter. And I will have to kite around a little bit, just waiting for cooldowns. Bramble, not a great one to walk into. Can actually get Bramble in some zones as the boss that don't look like the zone you'd normally see Bramble and it can catch you off guard. So you can have different terrain not being expecting it and then just walk into the AOE. So keep that in mind. And of course, once you see him and perhaps go down, you may have to run back and then you will know it is Bramble. But look at the difference in health here. Okay, this boss, I've got to kite around just for my particular build, but obviously the boss is not getting chunked like it was the last go around. Needless, this boss should go down, but like I mentioned, I can go higher with this particular build. I haven't really become capped. Still got over 11 minutes on the timer at this point. So time is still not an issue, but of course, eventually that will be. So I hope you find the video helpful and perhaps this tells you whether you want to try the pit, avoid the pit or whatever you may have planned for this season. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch and have a great day. We'll take one look inside of the chest and you'll see that we actually do not get the original material as mentioned. So now that we've scaled up to the next set of tier, we're now going to have to go back if we want to upgrade any of the items from the base level. So enjoy.